Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 21 november 2015. Dus de bulletin van zaterdag. Onze uitzendingen in het weekend zijn in het Engels. Our weekend shows are in English. Vandaag het propagatiebulletin en onder nieuws van de RSTB. We hebben opnieuw Contestia op de gebruikelijke wijze en daarnaast in de laatste minuut van de uitzending een test met aangepaste versie van Contestia met 16 in plaats van 2 tonen. De test met 8 tonen gisteren ging bij veel mensen toch wel heel erg goed. Vrijwel overal foutloos. Today we have the propagation bulletin and other news of the RSGB. As usual we have data in the Contestia mode running simultaneously with our spoken bulletin. Settings we use can be found on www.papaalpha0echotangoecho.nl. We are using 355 Hz as a center frequency. In the last minute of our transmission we will switch from Contestia with two tones, which is actually FSK and not so much MFSK, to a 16 tone variant. So you have to change the second customization variable in the Contestia settings of FLDG from 2 to 16. Yesterday's test with 8 tones, by the way, went very, very well. Good morning, this is GB2RS News. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYA, G4BAO and G3YLA. This week has been a bit of a mixed bag in terms of HF propagation. The early part of the week saw reasonable openings 18 to 21 megs, although a continuous K index of around 3 due to high solar, high speed solar wind stream took its toll. The VK9WA Willis Island the expedition was even audible on 40 metres with a simple dipole around tea time on Wednesday but overall the X signals were never brilliant and the bands had a tendency to be noisy. Very late on Wednesday evening plasma from a coronal mass ejection arrived on Earth pushing the K index to 5. As a result Thursday saw the bands noisier still although the maximum usable frequency at noon remained around 26 megs according to the Chilton Ionosond. Next week we expect more of the same with the solar flux index in the range of 105 to 115. The K index is expected to be in the range of 2 or 3, showing reasonably settled geomagnetic conditions that may bode well for next weekend CQ Worldwide CW contest. As ever, be prepared for a sudden elevated K due to the effect of the high speed solar wind, which can be difficult to predict. Now for the VHF and up propagation, things are looking flat for VHF UHF propagation again next week. The charts suggest low pressure won't be far away from the north of Britain with strong west or southwesterly winds at times. There are unlikely to be any significant tropospheric openings to get excited about, but last week saw some good rain scatter propagation on the gigahertz bands. With strong shower activity around coastal areas and along the English Channel on some days, there'll be scope for more of the same this coming week. Unlike summer thunderstorms which can be very heavy and slow moving, winter showers are fast moving in the strong upper level steering winds. Up to 30 to 50 miles per hour is possible, so you'll need to keep trash track. Uh, you'll, sorry, so you'll need to track your dish to keep up with them. There are also shallower they're, they're, sorry, they are also shallower, so you'll need to be closer than is the case with the deep convection of summertime. The Leonids meteor shower is over, so it's back to the early morning random QSOs for meteor scatter enthusiasts whilst we wait for the major Geminid shower in December. This is a good week for EME operators with the moon reaching perigee or its closest point. Losses will be low tomorrow and increasing declination means moon windows will be long. That's it from the propagation team for this week. This week, the World Radio Conference in Geneva finally approved a new amateur service allocation at 5 MHz, although only a small allocation of 15 kHz between 5351.5 to 5366.5 was agreed. It is the first new allocation at HF since the WARC of 1979. After intense pressure from the fixed service primary user, power limits have been set at 15 watts EIRP in regions 1 and 3, 20 watts EIRP in Mexico and 25 watts EIRP in Central America. 
South America and most of the Caribbean area. The new radio regulations will not come into force until the 1st of January 2017, but it will be for individual administrations to agree local arrangements. No change is expected to the current spectrum allocation at 5 megs within the UK. Regular updates from Colin Thomas, G3PSM, who is attending the conference and other background information are available at www.rsgb.org forward slash wrc hyphen 15. This December, 14 groups will activate G15YOTA and its regional variations taking part in Youngsters on the Air Month. The mix of participants is diverse, from schools to universities and local clubs. Many of the operators will be experiencing amateur radio for the first time, and it also presents a fantastic opportunity for youngsters already licensed to get on the air. The first couple of activations will take place on the 2nd of December at Durham and District ARS and on the 3rd uh, at number 2 Welsh Wing RAF Air Cadets. If you hear the youngsters on the air, please make the effort to talk to them. The Essex Record Office has released a sound recording that includes the second part of a speech by Marconi delivered at the unveiling of the Fisk Memorial in Australia. In the speech, Marconi forecast the impact that wireless communication will have on ship navigation and on the world economy in general. The Fisk Memorial commemorated the first direct wireless message sent from the UK to Australia in 1918. You can find the speech by typing Essex Record Office into your favourite search engine and then searching the site for Marconi, https two dots two slash soundcloud.com forward slash Essex hyphen record hyphen office forward slash speech hyphen by hyphen Marconi. I shouldn't worry about that, just do uh, the Essex radio office search. Do you think the VHF bands are quiet? Well, think again. Earlier this year, Thurrock Acorn's ARC averaged a two-metre activity afternoon that proved successful. The next activity afternoon is planned for the 28th of November between 1pm and 5pm. The club's own call sign GX4HKO will start calling at 1pm. Over in Northern Ireland, Bush Valley ARC chairman Jack MI0JPD and some fellow club members have formed a VHF net on Tuesday evenings. Jack operates from Sleeve Gallien at approximately 1800 feet ASL and other club members are stationed on available high ground. So far contacts have been made into North Wales, Lincolnshire, Scotland as well as contacts within Northern Ireland. The net listens on the calling channel 145.500 MHz before moving to a suitable frequency. If your club is doing something to keep the levels of activity high on the bands, drop us a line at bradcom at rsgb.org.uk. The X magazine has announced that it will no longer solicit input or publish its traditional annual Most Wanted DXCC survey. The last survey was conducted in the autumn of 2014. The list typically has appeared in the newsletter's January-February issue. The club log, website, survey and Most Wanted DXCC list is now the best place to find this sort of information. See www.clublog.org. Between 6.50pm on Sunday the 15th of November and 7am on the 16th, the main GB7HM DMR voice, digital voice repeater and backup backups were stolen from the repeater site six miles north of Wrexham. Details of the items and their serial numbers are on the repeater's website, www.gb7hm.uk. If you have any information leading to the return of these units, please contact them as soon as possible.